Good morning, everybody. Here we are again, Baruch Hashem, going through Lucia Mishakela, full devotion. I am this this mimer. Not not only did it change my life the first few times I learned it, but now going through it again, I'm like on fire. So I want to thank you guys very, very much for encouraging me to do this year and keep up with it. Um, okay, so let me just fix that a little bit. Okay. So I, I, my husband and I decided to do a challenge for ourselves because how do you, uh, there's a Bucky, a Bucky in Chassidus is somebody who knows Chassidus very, very well. And my husband's friends with him. And he once said to my husband, how do you know that you know Chassidus really well when you're able to explain it to a random stranger? He doesn't even have to be Jewish. You're able to explain the concepts to a random stranger on the street, find anybody on Eastern Parkway and say, hey, can I explain something to you? And you let me know if you get it. So once you're able to explain it, which means you, 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 you in a certain sense, you, you, don't, you don't have the ability to use the chassidish lushan, as we say, right? So it's like, you can't say kesser and not and whatever. But if you're able to explain it in such a way, then it means you really, really got it. So um, one of the challenges that my husband and I have is to be able to A, explain it in such a way, and B, to be able to go through the flow of the mimer in like a one sentence per ice. So I'm going to quickly do that. So the first ice is all the brachas that we get through serving the Abister. So we do our part, we serve Hashem, and the Abister benches us, adli die, with all these brachas. Sorry for the shaky. There we go. Then the next ice, ice base, is one second. What does it mean to serve Hashem? In order to understand how to serve Hashem, we, we have to define what it means to serve Hashem. And we discuss this concept of a master needing a servant. And so therefore, when a servant does something for the master, he actually fulfills the master, which leaves us with a very strong question, which is, wait a minute, if we're Hashem's servant, it means that the Abister needs us. It needs something. Can we really say that Hashem needs something? And it's a very, very powerful question. We also leave off with very good um, points proving both sides. So it's not like we're making this stuff up. Literally in Torah, there are sources that say both sides. There are sources that say we do make a difference in Hashem's life, and there are sources that say we do not make a difference. So this is with a very, very powerful question. Ois Gimel, number three, chapter three, it, it brings in and it explains to us all these levels of the Abister from Atmos and Mahosein Saif all the way through Kesser, and then it also touches upon Chachma bin Adas, which is within the level of Attilas, and then it goes through each one of the levels. I mean, it doesn't discuss it, but we know that Seder Shoshos has all the other four worlds, and then comes our world. So then, by understanding that, we're able to understand that to a certain extent, we do affect the Abister all the way up till Arechab bin. We do, under, we do affect the Abister. But in Atmos to Mahosein Saif, we don't. So both Psukim are true and relevant, right? So they're both Psukim makes sense. And that, in a certain sense, resolved our, uh, our question. That said, we are left off, when, and this is Ois Dalid, we're left off with another question, which is, wait a minute. As much as we just said that, does it actually add up to our Pasuk? And in our Pasuk, the wording of our Pasuk shows us that it doesn't really make sense. Because the Abisher himself uses the, 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 the singular I. I will bless you, which means that the narrator, and we discuss what that means, who's the narrator, who narrates the Torah? The Torah is narrated by God's deepest essence. God's deepest essence, Atmos and Mahosein Tzayv, is talking about what Havaya tells Moshe, right? So Moshe lives in our world. So this is the narrator standing, so to speak, not literally, but standing, so to speak, above. And it talks about what Havaya is, is, is discussing with Meshit, right? So if the narrator himself is narrating and he's speaking, he's the third person narrator, how does it make sense that at some point in our Pasuk he says, I, right? So where's the wording? Where is the wording? Sorry, guys, I lost the... Okay, there we go. I'll remove illness, right? I'll remove illness from the midst. What? Wait a minute. I thought we just said that Atmos and Mahos Saint Sark doesn't get involved with us. So it leaves us off with another question. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We thought we answered the question, but in reality, 
even in our Pashup Shad and in, in, in the simple translation, the simple meaning of the Pasuk that we're going, that we're discussing, it doesn't add up. So then, hey, ice hey, we discussed, okay, in order to understand this, we have to understand the fact that even though we really don't make a difference to Asma Summa Hussein Saif, in reality, when we do the right thing, we we fulfill the purpose by, for which the world was created, and the purpose for which the world was created comes all the way from Asma Summa Hussein Saif. So does Asma Summa Hussein Saif, the depth, the, the deepest part of the Abister, does he really care whether we uh, you know, whether we, we, we first flipped it this way and then flipped it that way, whether we cut from the top or whether they cut from the bottom, it doesn't really make sense what we did. How we did it, it doesn't make sense. But the end result that we accomplished, what we were put into this world to do, actually makes a difference to the A booster. So how does this affect us? Because if, if we live in this world, right, and we do the right thing, we get up early and we join a mimer share, we, we dive in, we try and think about what we're doing during our day and how can we be a proud Jew even in our work schedule or even, you know, at some point if we go back to going on the subway or whatever, like how can I be uh, um, making the Abister proud throughout my day? And when I do that, when I do that, I affect all the way to At Muslim Hossein Soy and, and the fact that we fulfilled his will, right? That was a lot more than uh, one sentence, I apologize. Okay, so now we are at the point of what we learned yesterday, which is that the basis of making that relationship with Hashem, the basis of everything in this world, is Kabbalah's all. Is this level that I was created by Hashem, and so therefore I am the servant of Hashem, and so therefore I do the will of Hashem. And that needs to be the basis. If we're not starting with that base point, then nothing else really matters. It's like, it's like not, it's like having a tree without any roots, right? So if we realize and we have to make a conscious effort, and that's why we say that Maida'ani, when we wake up first thing in the morning, we say Maida, it's, 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 it's an acknowledgement that the Abister is standing before me and I am a servant of Hashem. And so therefore I need to get up and do the things that the Abister created me to do, right? So that is the bottom, that's the basis of everything. Not only that, but when we dive in, when we start our davening, we say, we say, um, right? Haidu is the same source as Maideh. It's acknowledgement. It's turning our, our, our acknowledgement to Hashem and say, okay, I am the Abister servant. The Abister created me and he created me with specific things I need to do. And so therefore I have to go. Bizruzes, I have to go get up and I have to go do them. And we have to live with that concept for the, our entire day. That said... Let's discuss today, because today is very, very avoided, it's very exciting. Today, let's discuss Oiz, um, Zion, which helps us appreciate what that means in our everyday life and whether that's enough. Is it really enough to just live our lives by saying, I am the servant of Hashem and force yourself into doing the right thing? Is that, is that good enough? Okay. So in order to understand this, I want to give a preface and an introduction. My main, in, okay, so we're going to discuss in this ice how this whole thing affects our animal soul, our godly soul, and the tzitzis of the world, okay? So our nefesh of Bahamas is our animal soul, our nefesh of Lekis is our godly soul, and the tzitzis are the sparks that are hidden within the world, okay? So what does all of this mean, and how does this apply to our lives? So many times, and I, I, I learned chassidus for many, many years, without translating into practical avayda, into practical my everyday life, what these things meant. And so by the end of the mimer, I'd say, wow, what a nice lofty concept. And I wouldn't be able to translate it into my avayda, into, into what I'm going to do differently, how I'm going to see my life differently. So that's why I want to start by translating it into very practical terms. That way, when we read the mimer, it's going to be a lot more exciting. It's going to make a lot more sense. Okay. So what's your nefesh of Bahamas? Your nefesh of Bahamas is the voice inside of you that is in a certain way self-centered. It's pretty childish. So for example, the, the voice that comes and says, you know, just sleep in a little longer. 
it's, it's no one really cares who cares if you come up, if you come late whether to the shear or to davening or to work or whatever it's a childish thing you know a child doesn't understand the greater repercussions of their decision so so too our nefesh Baham is is pushing us to not really care about the greater repercussions of our of our decisions it's very immature it's this part of us that wants what it wants and doesn't really care how that affects somebody else um it's also the side of us that you know binge watches youtube videos or whenever we're stressed out and we want to like avoid life we binge on social media it's that side of us that is not necessarily out to destroy us and i want to make a clear distinction yetahara is a negative force that comes in and it's out to to get us our nefesh bahamas is just the immature self-centered self-pleasuring side of us that just wants to do what it wants to do so we we're not out to kill our nefesh bahamas what would happen if we kill a nefesh bahamas Shalom? we would not live we would just push it because nefesh bahamas is also the part of us that keeps our heart beating it keeps our our our, our highest it, it wakes us up in the morning it, it makes us do things right so for example if you have a desire uh for for you know, the latest technology, the Nefesh of Bahamas is the one that gets you to like, go, 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 go get it, go get it, go get it. So it's, it's, a, it's a powerful force, kind of like a child. It's a, it, it has energy. It has the, you know, highest. But at the same time, our, the Nefesh of Bahamas' mentality is on being, whether it's lazy or, you know, not lazy, but like taking the easy, easy way out or whether it is, self-centered selfish it doesn't think about the greater perspective okay so that's your nefesh bahamas so when i say nefesh bahamas i'm talking to that side of you it's not just like an external concept a, a nice lofty idea that we see now what's your nefesh kiss your nefesh kiss is a helical kamima mamish it's the piece of the abisher the mamish the, the literal piece of hashem that he blows into you every single day and he he gives you that living that living soul that's that's the piece of him that's always connected to him so the nefesh of and the nefesh of a kiss the beauty of it is that it 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 has seichel and it knows what's right it knows and it wants you it wants you to be connected with the avister at all times that said being that it's so and, and this is discussed in many other different my mom but being that it's so lo, not lofty but it's so godly and it's so pure and it's so wanting you to do the right thing it's hard for it to be in this constant struggle over you in in the body right because the nefesh of bahamas wants you to uh binge on some youtube or netflix or social media or whatever and meanwhile the nefesh of like kiss is coming and saying please please just can we can we go daven can we go learn you haven't said to him yet can we go sit to him can we connect to the abister Right? So this battle is very hard for it. But we have to realize, and the mimer, we're going to discuss it very soon, we have to realize that the Abister created this battle in order for the Nefesh kiss not to live in a point of being of self-destruction, like, oh, this, I, I, I'm in torture. I'm, I'm getting tortured all day, every day, because there's a, there's a strong, powerful, childish force that's taking over the body. And it tells it to do all these things, and I, 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 I'm, I'm living in, in gullus. And that's essentially, in a, certain one, in a certain sense, what it does. But that's not its purpose. Its purpose is to take the nefesh of Bahamas and to teach it how to do the right thing. So, right, so a parent comes and tells a child and says, you know, wouldn't it be so nice if we go daven? Come, let's daven together. I'm going to show you how beautiful davening is. So we take, we, 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 um, we take the force of the child and we sing songs and we explain to him how the Abister matters and how much we love him and all these beautiful things. And we're able to, to channel the, the energy and the force of a child to do the right thing. And that is the job of the Nefesh, of the nefesh Elikis. Our godly soul is sent to this world to elevate not just the body because it, it, it encourages the body to do the right thing, but to elevate and transform the energy and the, the, the will of the nefesh of the Bahamas, of the animal soul, to want to do the right thing, okay? Okay, by doing this, we're elevating, give me a second, by doing this, we're elevating sparks in this world. That's a much harder 
topic to describe, but just realize that every single time you turn on your phone and you join a Zoom share or you listen to you know, a share on, on, online, you're elevating sparks in your phone. You're elevating the sparks of the internet. You're elevating and, and you're, you're raising up these physical things that seem to not, we're not able to necessarily see the spark of Hashem inside of it, but the fact that you're using it for something good, you are, you're finding that spark of the Avisar inside of it and you're raising, you're lifting it up um, to, to, to godliness. You're, you're elevating it. Okay. Now that we said this, 10 minutes, we're doing good. Okay. So I hope that made sense because I really, really want that everything we read should have practical application. So I hope you guys now take a moment. I want, I want to give a challenge for today and session for Shabbos. Take a moment. And once you make a decision, let's say to eat breakfast or, you know, to watch something or to, to make whatever activity, take a moment and say, okay, where did that come from? Did that come from my nefesh of Bahamas, from my animal soul? Or did it come from my nefesh of kiss? And the more you start practicing this daily in your actions throughout your day, the more you start being more conscious to where that plays out in your life. And you're able to pinpoint, ah, this is my Nefesh of Bahamas. And you have a relevant thing to discuss when you learn a mimer. Okay. Page 46. However, the service of Hashem is not limited to Kabbalah soul alone, right? Because last, yesterday we said, the Kabbalah soul is the baseline. It's the basis of everything. It's one of the most important things. And if we don't realize this, how can we really grow? How can we really do anything else? Okay. However, the service of Hashem is not limited to Kabbalah soul alone. Since the Pasuk, and you shall serve the Lord your God, refers to the service of prayer as well, which involves developing a love for Hashem. Okay. So, now we're saying, and you shall serve the Lord, the Lord your God. And what does that actually mean? It means to daven. It means work on our davening, which involves developing a love for Hashem. And I'm going to discuss this a little deeper, okay? When the, when Ram, when the Rambam writes, it is, is it, a positive, it is a positive mitzvah to daven, as the Pasuk states, and you shall serve the Lord your God. From tradition, we know that this refers to the service of prayer, as the Pasuk states, and as the Pasuk states, and to serve him with all your heart. Regarding these, our sages have said, What is the service of the heart? It is prayer. And you start getting used to that sentence because the Rebbe uses it in a ton of different, not just my marim, but also sikhas. It, it's all over this right? So Ezuhi Avaida Shabalev Zoy Tfila. It is implicit that it includes, in addition to serving Hashem out of awe, awe meaning respect, fear, appreciation, all these things, also serving Him with love. This is the concept of prayer regarding which the Zara writes. There is no worship of Hashem that can be compared to the worship of Hashem with love. Okay? So, what are we saying? We're saying that Kabbalah soul is nice and all, but in Kabbalah soul, the basis of Kabbalah soul is this level of awe, this level of Abishar created me, and so therefore I need to serve him. That comes out of more of a respect, out of a love, out of, uh, sorry, out of awe, out of a, a, a certain sense of fear, right? That said, what we're saying here is that we need to serve, we, we definitely need to serve the Abishar through prayer. What is prayer? And you, you'll start to realize why one of the pieces of our, our program was to work on our davening because our davening is so crucial to create a love for Hashem. The reason why prayer must involve serving Hashem with love is because prayer affects both the godly soul and the animal soul. The Hebrew word for, the, for prayer, tefillah, is related to the word teufel, to connect. Since through prayer, the godly soul is connected with its spiritual source, right? So not only when we daven, we're not just, oh, we're going to set aside our Nefesh Bahamas who wants us to push us to, to watch other things and do other things. And we're going to shut it down and shh, shh, hush, hush, hush. And then we're going to just focus our Nefesh like kiss, And we're going to connect it to the Abister. But the moment our davening finishes, our Nefesh Bahamas has been raging for the past 30 minutes or 20 minutes or however long it takes you to daven, and then it comes even stronger. So what are we trying to do? In our prayer, we're trying to not just elevate our Nefesh Eloi kiss and, and connect to this, you know, godly part of us, 
we're also trying to transform and create a love within our Nefesh of Bahamas. An additional effect of prayer is that it refines the animal soul and elevates the spiritual parks, the sparks and the tzitzis within the body and its portion of the world. So every time we dive in, as long as we, we think about our, our, and that's one of the reasons why I told everyone, make sure to work on your fish and bellies. Make sure to work on knowing what you're saying and say, what does this mean to me? What does this mean to the selfish, self-centered, immature side of me that's constantly bothering me? How can I translate this to change even my nefesh of Bahamas? The two effects of prayer are achieved specifically by serving Hashem out of love. Since when one, since when one serves Hashem out of awe and Kabbalah alone, he does not affect change within himself and does not refine the animal soul. I want to take a moment. This is a wonderful discussion. All of us in our own level of uh, being Bali Shuvah, whether we grew up from and now we're choosing to be, because at every point and stage in your life, you have to choose to stay from. So you're also Bal Shuvah in that sense. Or if we literally didn't, and then we're, we, we made Shuvah in the other sense. But this is a very, very important thing to note, that many of us, when we first originally became from, we did it for a specific reason, or we felt that it's the right thing to do, or we started connecting and it was so spiritual because our Chabad house rabbi said this and said that, and it was so nice and floaty and amazing. But in order for it to be long lasting, it can't just stay in, the, in, in that baseline. We have to take these decisions to be from, we have to take the decisions to, to keep Torah, to keep mitzvahs, to, to do all these things, and we have to create and we have to work on creating a love for them so it's not just forcing ourselves to do this thing because oh i became from and so therefore i signed up to 613 checklist you know check 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 just because you decide to become from or just because you grew up from and having that baseline of it, this is a checklist i must check off it is not enough it is not enough it is not going to take you to the right place it's, it, it's like running your, your car on the lowest setting in, in, with gas, right? So, so to here, we need to foster a love. We need to, if, if we realize that there's something that we're struggling in our lives, whether it's, you know, davening is a hard thing for us or whether, sorry, it's loud, whether keeping kosher is a hard thing for us, we have to learn more about it and make an appreciation out of love. So we can connect to Hashem through that mitzvah and connect to Hashem through love as a whole. Because once we have love, once we start to love this thing that is, even though it's a struggle for us, we start to love it, then we're able to have this, we're, we have a maturity within our, our, our avoid of Hashem. And not only that, but we're able to transform our nefesh of Bahamas. We're able to take our nefesh of Bahamas and say, wow, even the selfish, childish, immature part of me loves davening. Even the selfish, childish, immature part of me loves joining a, a shir, right? Okay. Let's read footnote 83, and I think we're gonna, uh, probably going to leave off with that. Okay. Awe is capable of suppressing the earthly desires of the animal soul, but not of transforming it or drawing it nearer to godliness. Love, however, creates a positive sense of connection that bonds the godly soul with its godly source and can even envelop the animal soul, igniting within it a passionate love to unite with God and to turn itself over to holiness. Okay. So awe in of itself, just having fear, having this, this respect, having this, you know, imagine even in a marriage, if all you do is have respect for your spouse, I'm sorry, but that's not going to cut it when, you know, once you have kids or, or even, even within the level of, of, of living life, you can't just live with someone you respect if you don't, also love them you have to create this love and so therefore at every stage of the way think you know do i really love doing this and if you don't love doing this so take a moment and say where can i find more resources to really appreciate what's going on there's there's literally a mimer about basically everything under the sun there's a secha there's a book there's a you know rebbe's recording of this or that or the other there's a video there's Every single thing that you're struggling with, whether it's, you know, whether it's kashas, whether it's keeping Shabbos, whether it's lighting Shabbos candles on time, whether it's 
you know, nowadays everybody, I know it, it must be really hard to spend Shabbos all alone. And I miss you guys so much. And I wish I could invite everybody for Shabbos right here, right now. And it's Hashem, we will spend all Shabbos together in Yerushalayim. But for example, if Shabbos is a struggle for you, so I also made a beautiful uh, suggestion in our last, in the one of the classes that I did this week about finding a book that talks about Shabbos or finding something that's inspirational and making that just a, a, just a Shabbos treat, right? So let's get ourselves to love these things, even, even the things that we struggle with. Let's find that more. Let's work on our love. Let's work on loving the Abishur. Let's work on our loving that aspect of our, of our Aveda. Okay. That said, we're going to discuss this level of love again on Sunday. Um, I really hope everybody has at least one version of the Mimer. And if you're able to go and review it on Shabbos and get yourself excited and make it yours. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them over my way. And I'm more than happy to answer either after Shabbos or Sunday whenever I turn on my phone next. Um, but yes, let's work on our love. Because love is the thing that really transforms not just our nefesh kiss, but our nefesh abahamis as well. Okay, I'm going to... See you guys on Sunday, Mitzvah Shem. Have a good job.